understand anything <laughs> about it. We don't know how it works. <laughs> we don't know anything about it, really. My name is Matt Denton. I'm from Winchester in the UK. Uh, I'm an animatronic designer for my day job. This machine is called the Mantis. It's a six-legged hexapod walking machine. Uh, it was created partly uh, to inspire as a creative engineering project and also as a more serious research and development platform for the use of hexapod technology uh, in sensitive terrain or difficult terrain. So you can get it. My background in the film industry is within specifically creature effects and it's, it's kind of a division of special effects. I've been doing this 20 years now, but the work was slowly getting less and less interested in drying up because computer graphics came along and suddenly all of these kind of effects were being done with visual effects because, you know, it's easier, there's no such thing as physics and uh, slowly that process also became cheaper and started to wipe out some of our animatronics industry. And the skill set that I'd learned in there and the people that I'd met had a massive amount of, of, of knowledge and skill and I really wanted to, it would, thought it would be nice to be able to show that off. Uh, and building something like the Mantis, you know, you can come and see it, you can come and sit in it, you can ride it. You can't do that with a visual effects. There were uh, several points where I felt like given up. It was horrible. It was a hard 18 months, you know, because for a start, you know, you go to work every day and you're the only person there. And that's hard, just sat in a massive warehouse, in a dark warehouse, cold most of the time, freezing cold in the winter. And, you know, I was doing 16 hours a day on average. If, if I wasn't in the workshop, maybe for uh, 10 to 12 hours, I'd come home and do another few hours on the computer. And the worst part about it is when you're on a project on your own and like after the first 18 months and I could see this stuff wasn't working, you can't then go to your colleague, oh, your bit's broken, or you know, your bit needs sorting out and feel good about the bit that I did because my software's working, let's say, it's a mechanical problem. You can't kind of just least think, oh, well, at least they're gonna sort that problem out. I have to sort everything out. I definitely had support from family as well as mental support. My father's helped with whenever there's something that needs to be moved, he'll turn up with the trailer, he'll help me load the machine up. My mother took over my bookkeeping, so you know, it's a great help because that's a horrible job. No one likes doing that, and uh, she does it for me. Yep. He's totally dedicated to totally, this project. Yeah. Once he's got something in mind, he's, he's got tunnel vision. 
totally dedicated. I can only remember that when he was a very young boy, he was always as good as gold because he was totally engrossed in building things. Building. Oh, he's um, quite often dropping bits of hot solder on his carpet in his bedroom and burning it, wasn't he? Yes. Making electronic things and... Uh, and he always yeah. had Lego everywhere when he Ev was tiny, <laughs> well, when he was young. This is IC Hexapod, and it's effectively one of my Hexapod robots, which I took and uh, gave it a face and a, a head and gave it some vision. And so it has uh, a computer vision system just looking for faces. So you can see it's tracking my face now and interacting with me. When it takes a picture, so once it's locked onto your face for about seven or eight seconds, it snaps a picture of you, stores it in its memory, and then uploads it to its internet web page later on. So it has about 15,000 images of people's faces now that it's met at various events. And too many of me. <laughs> I had to do so much by myself just because of the budget. You know, and it, we'd already gone over budget, and uh, it was just, it was, costing a lot of money, hundreds of thousands. Let's just leave it at that, hundreds of thousands. Four years of my life, well, I mean, three years working on it, and it's four years since the project started. And I suppose I started to get the fear that you've, you, when you invest so much into a project which doesn't have an absolute commercial uh, you know, output at the end of it, you have to rely on the fact that it's a creative machine, primarily, and if people don't like it, then they just don't like it. This is Winchester, and this is where I live. Um, I've been living here for 11, nearly 12 years now, and uh, Winchester is a beautiful place. It was the first capital of England, and it has a huge amount of uh, historic importance. Uh, it's a great place to live, what can I say? Stress levels have gone right down now because the build was a nightmare. But now that the build is over, the matter's built, that's the key word, I can relax. Yeah. The way it's their way of saying it, but you know. I don't really know where it's going to lead on from here either because I don't know whether it's still going to go down this commercial avenue or not. Uh, there's still interest from various commercial uh, sectors, but no one's actually come up, although they've said yes, this week can find a use of this, no one's actually come up with any money yet. So, so if you feel you have something you're passionate about it, then do your best to do it because uh, yeah, good things will come of it, I'm sure.